Good Life Creed uh, principle, sin and damnation, simply suggests, it's a very simple idea, that um, if we... But you know, it's been so long since I've thought about it. I really, hold on, let me back up just a second. As simple as I think it is. I need to take a, take a run at this. Oh, yeah. So what is sin in this case? I'm not a religious person. I don't abide any theology. What, what deity do I have to sin against that I know about? Um, it's not that. It's sinning against our better nature, sinning against the values that we've, uh, we have laid out for ourselves and that we hold, that we will abide. For me, it is the 35 principles that I have set forth for myself that help me to achieve the eight objectives, which are, which are part of the Good Life Creed, which uh, is in my book, Going Alone, in the chapter titled Good Life. Sin, then, is whatever fails to abide those principles towards the achievement of those objectives. Damnation is the resulting circumstance of um, life that comes of that. Now, I did did have it laid out in the book, and I'm going to take a look. And what do you know? I just opened the page right to it. What are the odds? There it is right there. Let's read it. Maybe that will help too. It'll, it's not very long. Sin and damnation. The sub-principles are falsity, credulity, faith, superstition, dogma, authority, rumor, and gossip. Wow, eight. It is a sin to invest our expectations with hope, which may be corrupted or foiled by fortune. It is a sin to invest our expectations with hope, which may be... Oh, yeah. So that means ladling too much too much putting into our expectations our well-being and, and, and happiness that they may come true because they may not. It is also a sin to believe things without good reason, to acquiesce for the sake of comfort or security or peace or to simply avoid the discomfort of not knowing. The penalty for this sin is damnation in the here and now which is the only time we will ever really have. Damned for our unreasoned want. Damned for our unreasoned belief. Damned for our thoughtless, careless communications. So principles, it's been so long since I've dealt with this one in detail. Sub-principles, falsity, credulity, faith, superstition, dogma. So the sins here, these are not what I said before. It's been so long since I've thought this one through. These are actual items that I'm defining as sins. Falsity, being untrue. Credulity, believing things too easily is coming back to me. Faith, belief founded on belief itself without anything more. That's what faith is. The, as the Bible says, evidence of things unseen. Superstition, belief in things that are clearly nonsense, <laughs> categorically. Dogma, belief Bounded on precedence or the circumstance and authority of, of the state, which is the next of, of the state or the church or the or the community or the culture or whatever the case may be, and then authority is the next one. Belief. So this is these are sins against belief. These are ways of believing things that are not sound. Being untrue is not a belief, but believing the truth is just fal falsity of being untrue. Credulity, believing things too easily. Faith, as I said before, faith, found, belief founded on belief. Superstition, just nonsense. Dogma, you know, the believe it because we've always believed it, such a thing. Authority, believe it because I tell you so. And I've got, I've got a funny hat or a funny cape, and I, I look like I know. <laughs> Rumor. Or I occupy an office that I should know from. Rumor. Uh, trading rumors is sin. Gossip, of course. I get it now. These are actual sins. The things that I behaviors that I define as sins, which basically come down to um, being untrue or believing things for bit 
believing being the true, believing things for bad reason, engaging in rumor or gossip. Those are the four main things. Hmm. It took me a while to uh, ramp back up for that one, huh?